This video is going to show you how you can do an independent samples t-test in R. I'm also going to show you how you can do a welts test for when you do not have homogeneity of variance. I'll also be showing you how you can get your effect size or Cohen's D for your t-test as well. So the data and the code link below the video. I'm just going to read in the data here. I'm just going to call it df. And here is the data. Okay, we've got a variable here called condition. Then we've got L per m. And what L per m stands for is liters per minute. Because what this data set's looking at, it's looking at whether vaping, um, so nicotine vapes, have an influence on lung capacity. So there's some um, ongoing research that um, a friend of mine is actually doing in this area to see if vaping is having an impact on lung capacity. So this is just an example data set, not real data. I'm just going to attach this data just to make life a little bit easier later on. And then I'm going to label condition. So you can see in our data frame, we've got condition one and condition two. Condition one is vape and condition two is control. So our non-vapors. I'm just going to label that. And if we look back at our data, you can see we've got vape and control. If we want to look at the distribution of the data, we'll do a brief box plot. There's a video on and box plots is on my YouTube channel if you're interested in box plots. And all we want to do is look at liters per minute separate for conditions. So we can look at the distribution of our two conditions if we like. Here we go. So we can see in our two conditions there, probably a positive skew um, for both slightly, but there's nothing particularly concerning in that, I'd say. And if you want to get a skew statistic, again, there's several different ways we could do this. Um, I'm just going to show you very quickly how we could look at the distribution in each condition using the table one package. Um, and that'll give us our descriptive statistics as well. If you haven't installed table one, you can install it using that code. We need to get out of our library. And then what we're going to do is create a table one of our data frame. And we're going to stratify it by condition. I'm going to run that. And this gives us a summary table. It's not too exciting. What we do, we get liters per minute for the vape condition and liters per minute for the control condition. So you can see we've got um number of missed data, the mean, the standard deviation, medium, um, the quartiles, minimum, maximum, and skewness statistics. Skewness is really low. Um, so there's nothing particularly odd about this data that we need to be concerned about. But one thing that we do need to consider um, is homogeneity of variance. Okay, that's one of our assumptions of independent samples t tests. It's really easy to test, but we can do that using the car package. Again, if you haven't installed car, you need to install that. If you have, you just need to activate it from your library. Then we can use this command, Levine test. And what we're looking at is our dependent variable, liters per minute, L per M, by condition. It's almost like we are going to use later on for our T test, and we just tell it the data set we are using is our what we call df, we can run that. And we get this Levine's test here. Now, we want our Levine's test to be non-significant. This means we have homogeneity variance. So as you can see, we have homogeneity variance, it's non-significant. So we have met the assumptions of our independent samples t-test. So how do we run an independent samples t-test? Well, we use t-test. So we just tell R that we want to do a t dot test. We just say our dependent variable, L per M, liters per minute, tilde, predicted by condition. Now, we need to make this statement here, var equal equals true. So this is just telling it we have the quality of variance, okay, homogeneity of variance, because we've met Levine's assumption. And that's it. That's all the command that we require. We run that, and this gives us our independent sample t test. Here is our t statistic and our degrees of freedom and our p value. And we can write this up accordingly. We give t and degrees of freedom 38. We can give our um, t statistic of minus 2.27. And our p value of 0 0.02, let me round that to 9. Of course, 
That's not everything though. We also need to understand well, which group has best lung capacity for looking at our two groups. Well, we can see here, it tells us here, the mean of group one is 475, the mean of group two is 559. So our non-vapors have better lung capacity on average. Now we can also give an effect size for that difference. So to do that, we can use the F size package. Again, you need to install it if you haven't already done so. Let me just pull that out of our library. And then we just ask for a Cohen's D for, and again, it's the consistency of the command, L per M tilde predicted by condition. We will not. And that's our Cohen's D. So we we can add that to our write-up and just add D equals 0.72. Now, you'll note there's a minus here and there's also um, a minus with the T statistic. Doesn't matter too much, providing it's clear which condition um, has the highest scores, when, you know, when you're explaining your results. Because obviously how you label your conditions is arbitrary. You could have called the um, non-vaping condition, your control condition, condition one, and the vapors condition two, and you would have had the same T statistic, the same effect size, but without that minus figure. So it's not that important. Now, finally, if you didn't have homogeneity of variance, so if you failed that assumption, your Levine's test was significant, you could produce a Welch test instead. Now, this is actually the default in R. So all we have to do to produce that is write T test, L per M tilde predicted by, and we don't need to mention var dot equal at all. So we just do that. And this gives us our Welch to sample t test here so it gives us our corrected t test for lack of homogeneity and variance as you can see the results are pretty much the same you'll see the degrees of freedom are obviously different it has been argued that to be honest you might as well just always do a welds test there's no real situation where a welds test will cause any problems whereas a standard independent samples t test you may have problems if you lack homogeneity and variance and um, if you forget to test for that, for example. So generally speaking, when I do these things, I will just run that t-test command and then homogeneity of variance isn't really an issue that I need to consider. The Cohen's D will be produced in exactly the same way.